warm welcome to a pod full of saints on wednesday the 12th of april 2023 when we look back on two st Albans city matches over the easter weekend with myself david tavener and uh, hiding away there somewhere in the dark uh, jake ellicott uh hello dave yes yes has gone a bit dark isn't it but you know april showers and that all that so hello dave hello everyone hope you're well well, you look much better in the dark, Jake, as many people say. And a very good evening to, to Lee Wood. Good evening, fellas. How are we? Um, but I can, we are illuminated by the shine off the top of Jacob's big Swede over there. So uh, we're all good to go, Thank boys. You. That's helping no end. Um, right, two games look back on, we said, over the Easter weekend. Starting on a good Friday was anything but good. My goodness, what a load of rubbish. Um, yeah. <laughs> we had a 2,000 crowd down there, well, just about, anyway, and we said on the, haven't we, on the podcast about get at teams, when they're out of form, or lowly teams, get at them from the start, unsettle them, and what do we do? We sat back and waited for them to Braintree Town to be bored into submission. Well, they weren't having any of it, were they? But the highlights, <laughs> I felt, I don't know what you made of it, the highlights, I thought, made us look more attack-minded than we were on the day, from the side of the pitch. It wasn't very inspiring. What was it like for you two? Wow. That says it all. <laughs> well, to be fair, mate, when you said it was a load, of, a load of rubbish, that wasn't your unofficial line, was it? Because we've, um, I don't think it was that complimentary, Dave, if I'm honest. I don't know if anybody's was, just the people around us and people spoke to after the game. Nobody mm. could understand why we played as we did. Um, oh. We didn't try to get at them at all. Um, it was possession football at all costs, but the only thing was we kept giving it away, in a, particularly in the first half. Um, so that didn't work either. But why? We didn't look as though we wanted to win it. First 10 minutes was OK. Mm. It was quite interesting because I bumped into the Braintree chairman uh, in the boardroom at half time. And he, he just couldn't believe how badly we were playing. Their management team had been working extra hard that previous week just to try and nullify all of our attacking threats. But Braintree are a well-organised, professional outfit. They're strong. They know how to manage the game exceptionally well. He said to me that if we scored first, that was it because we got to push the game from there on in and that's not their strength. Their strength was exactly how it all panned out. They scored first and then that was it. They shut up shop. They managed the game superbly well and we just could not break them down. I thought we looked extremely slow. I thought we looked a bit leggy. Um, we were almost run out of ideas. We always had that go-to ball with get Devontae marauding over, the, uh, overlapping and then getting the ball in. But, Nothing just seemed to work at all, did it, on Friday? No, they were six games without a win in the league. Hadn't scored in the previous three. So mm. what we were thinking, I just don't know. Um, one of the things that frustrated me most was we didn't change our tactics. All right, at the start of the second half, we got it forward a little bit quicker. But it seemed to be nobody on the pitch who was taking charge to say, this isn't right, we've got to change it. But more significantly... It didn't appear as though there was anything coming from the bench, which was most worrying. Um, we just sat with it and brain two were happy with that. Mm. Jake? Yeah, abso- absolutely. I think um, it was it was a performance that sort of came out of nowhere, didn't it, as well? As I get darker and darker. Uh, let's get a light on. Oh, that doesn't help either. Um, but it, it was just out of nowhere, wasn't it? Just... T- Last few weeks we've been playing well, maybe not spectacularly, but we've been putting ourselves on teams, imposing ourselves, especially in midfield, and making sure that, you know, even if we didn't put all our chances away, we were creating the chances, we were the better team. Um, but against Braintree, it almost felt like we were just happy to sort of let them have most of the game and then act surprised when they sort of had two goals and... That was it, wasn't it? We were mm. never going to fight back for that. We never looked like we were fighting back from it as well. I think that's the annoying thing. Of course, that second goal kills you so quickly after half time, but there just wasn't anything there. And we talked to a few fans after the game, sort of saying, you know, the fans behind the goal did their best, but the players on the pitch did not offer really much at all to get behind on Friday. And I don't know if that was tactical or whatever, but it just felt like it almost felt like one of those classic end of well, you know, end of March, early April games at Clarence Park, where our playoff hopes just start to hit a bit of a road bump and you're thinking, uh-oh, 
there's a bit of a worry now. So, yeah, and I think as well with the results that went around on the day as well, worked in our favour to some extent, but also I think it was a bit of a missed opportunity. Just, to, just We didn't perform to the levels at all that we normally do. It certainly was a missed opportunity, wasn't it? Because we, we'd gone above them and we could have put them practically out of a race. Instead, we gave them the confidence to win that one and then they beat Absolute United on Easter Monday as well. And suddenly out of nowhere, they're back in a very strong position. Mm. And we really should have grasped it and pushed them out of it. Listen, they're not a bad side, are they? I mean, you know, they went on a run sort of quite early on in the season and they've just sort of just hung around the playoff spots ever since. They're not a bad side. They, I wouldn't say they grind out results and they're not easy on the eye. But, but then again, at this time of year, all you want is results. Performances, they do fall secondary, don't they? Um, speaking of the fans, Jake, there were, you know, after the whistle, there were some boos. Hmm. I mean, you know, don't boo. I mean, I'm a big fan of if you pay your money, you can sort of, you know, you can vent your anger. But put into context, if you want booze, I, we can we can take you back to the back to the dark days of Jimmy <laughs> Neighbor, and to lesser extent the back end of the Grey Golds era. Even David yeah. Howe, you know, it's there. There were time and places to boo the boo the players. Good Friday wasn't really one of them, but you know I understand the frustrations because they were high and they were rife and they were loud. But I don't think it was just, I don't think it's lack of effort. I think it just was one of those games where it didn't fall for us. Braintree were a good side. They they were smarter than us, if if anything else. They were smarter than us because we self-inflicted it. We didn't try to impose ourselves on them. Mm. Um, I can understand the booze 100%. We are still the most expensive ground in the league to get into. So fans have got a right to expect some entertainment. And uh, we provided none at all on Friday. I agree with what I think Jake said earlier. It, it came a bit out of the blue, that performance. Um, we've had some dodgy ones lately. It um, hasn't all been brilliant flowing football, um, but that was the lowest of the low because we just couldn't change our mindset from early in the game. And what about yeah. that first goal? Have, have you watched it back? Um, they gave it to Barris Altintop, the captain, and it doesn't look like the ball across the line until he got smashed over by Kyra and Clements. And yet the linesman had his flag up already and had given a goal, which... It's a generous decision. <laughs> yeah, just, he's a bit eager, isn't he? Um, yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't great defending from the set piece, was it? And I think the annoying thing about that goal was what you know. Fifteen minutes before that, Banton had quite a reasonable chance, didn't he? Where he burst through and tried to chip Jack Sims in the Braintree goal, um, and just couldn't put it away. But yeah, Braintree again. That sort of a bit of a frailty from a set piece, but you know that happens. Um, but I think really that the it's the second goal, isn't it, that really does kill you? It, you know, you've got no way of coming back. But the time, the time that scored, and Braintree were more than happy to just sit on what they had, and they did it very, very well. And you can see why they are where they are in the division. You mentioned Jack Sims, the goalkeeper there, Jake. Of course, he picked up an early book in at twenty-one minutes. Mm. Came out his penalty area, collided <laughs> with um, uh, Mitch Mitchell Weiss. Weiss. A uh, booking, right decision, wasn't it? It was never a red card. The ball was going off towards the corner flag. Yeah, right decision. I mean, we've seen uh, we've seen Dylan Berry do that a few times this season, haven't we? So, uh, yeah, good decision. Um, and yeah, no complaints at all from me. That, that second goal, he's the only one that knocked us out. A lovely little chip in and a cracking header by uh, Alfie Pavey. No, leave it, Jake. It's much better. Much better in the dark. Much better. Um, yeah, cracking Eddie. He's, tr- he's struggled for goals since he's gone there. Where was it from Dover? Um, somewhere anyway. Um, but lovely little head of that, and uh, poor old uh, Dylan Berry didn't stand a chance of that one. No. Well, they're well executed goals, fellas. You know, this is what yeah. we said on on last week's pod, and a point that was actually picked up by a couple of our watchers: the fact that if they score first, it's going to be such an upheaval to sort of try and get back into the game just on the basis of, of how they play the game and how they manage and how they they manipulate the clock, if you like. Um, you've said it before there, fellas. You know, it, it's a bad result. It's, and it's just come up to such wrong time of, of the season when we're pushing for promotion. Um, but, you know, we're still in it. We're still there. It's a, we've got to just ride it off now because we can dissect it 
over and over and over again, but it won't do us any favours and it'll just give us all the hump even greater. So it's just, yeah. you know. <laughs> but again, I think what... We all pushed for Sean Jeffers to start, did we not? And, you know, Cooper missed a really good chance early on in the first half. Um, and I think that the fact that Jeff has come back into the game for, for the Concord just shows maybe what we were missing, like that plan B that you spoke of there earlier on, Tabs. Well, um, I was going to come on to the uh, Monday game at Concord Rangers. Was there any way that nobody could not start with Sean Jeffers? Not in my I eyes, though. So. I mean, no, because no. We've, all, we've all sort of touched upon this. And I think there was a point when, after Sean did score on Monday, there, there were a couple of people responding to the club tweet saying, look, he's got to start every game. He's got to start every game because you can put... The balance in the side wasn't wasn't messed up that much early on in the season when he was banging in the goals, you know. And it's... Yes, you've got to try different different things. And Nobby very eloquently explained why he'd left Jeffers out for such a prolonged amount of time. And it worked to a certain degree. But when it doesn't stop working, you know, you have to resort back to type. And that type isn't always... A bad thing because Sean Jeffers is one of the best strikers in the league and he proved that on Monday. It's funny, isn't it? He must have had five chances, I should think, during the game. I don't think they had them all on the highlights. Mm. And you could say, well, he's not sticking them away. <laughs> but how many other of our players get in those positions? He's a, he's a goal scorer. He's a predator. He gets in the right positions. He knows how to get in those positions. And to not play him for that length of time, I can understand pulling him off now and then just to give him a kick up the backside. Um, but you look at our record, the minutes he didn't start in those games when he came on the sub, and our record wasn't great when he was off the pitch. Um, you've got to play him. He's, he's a natural goal scorer. Um, mm. Just feed him and he'll, he'll eventually stick him away, as we found out on Saturday. On Monday, he's a cracking header. Mm. Oh, yes. Yeah. He's, he's probably put away one of the, probably the hardest chance, isn't he, with that header? Absolutely amazing leap. And, you know, as you say, he had missed a couple that he probably could have scored. And he hasn't, you know, he, in the games he has played in recently, he hasn't been putting away every chance. Think of Bath away, you know, a typical game where he missed a handful that you'd normally expect him to score. So, you know, you can understand that. But as you can say, say the impact he had on Monday and also the amount of fans, you know, Lee, you talked about people applying to the club Twitter, you know, the amount of fans that were in, in the ground on Friday afternoon at Clarence Park going, you know, we need Sean Jeffers on this pitch as soon as possible. And, you know, we need him on there. And, you know, he, he didn't have an impact because there wasn't much of a service to him. But he is a goal scorer. He does put chances away. And it's getting to that stage of the season now. You know, it doesn't matter how they go in. As long as they go in, that's all we care about. It's funny. Concord Rangers, Monday, uh, what have they got? One win, 11 or 12 before that. Got stuff 7-0 on Friday. Their team was basically kids. Get at them and attack them and sort them out early. Put the game to bed first half an hour or so. <laughs> I know we keep saying this. We didn't do it. Uh, Shea Cooper had a good chance early on to put it across the face of a goal. And he was a threat, but his finishing wasn't great until that header came in. They let him go and he's just beautiful header. Stuck that one away, no problem. Um, but our man of a match Monday was Dylan Berry. Uh, two yeah. outstanding saves in the first half and a couple of crucial blocks by his left-hand post. Uh, otherwise, we could have been on the end of a most embarrassing result. Yeah. Watching, embarrassing, watching... though. Yeah, sorry. Go on, go on. I'd say, Lee, that watching the highlights, it was similar, reminded me similarly to the Slough victory earlier in the season down their, play, their place with the, bear, the saves that Berry made. Absolutely outstanding and... As you say, I don't think there's many keepers in this division that would have made the saves that he would have first half that kept it at 1-0. But then look, watching the highlights, it looks like we could have, you know, Sean probably could have scored. Zane Banton one had one that was blocked in the goal mouth. There, there were opportunities there, as you said. Again, it was just a case of, did we put them away? I, I don't know. Sorry, Lee. <laughs> no, I don't apologise, mate. It was just the fact that um, Aaron made a good a good point. Where, uh, watch it off the pod. So we could have been falling up, like early doors, uh, but the fact of the matter is, how many times in the past have we lost a game and then we go on like a little bit of a stuttering run where we don't pick up a win for two, three, four games even? 
So for us to come back, I think it's the result way more than the performance that overshadows anything else on the day. Yes, Barry made some fantastic saves. That's what he's there for. Jeffers needs to come in and score some goals. That's what he's there for. So everyone did their job. And if Nobby is true to himself, he'd be quite happy because the fact is that the key player stepped up and it got us to win. It wasn't pretty. And yes, it could have been so very, very different day. But given the fact that the Braintree match was such an absolute monumental shit show, the fact is that we got the three points at, at Concord, mate, serves us in good stead. And it's now back in, and we're now back in the mix again. It felt like we had gone, at the, ga- the game had gone, Lee, at the ground. Yeah. Uh, we thought we had missed our chance. We thought we were going to get a point out of this. Uh, and as a person next to me said, when uh, Jeff has scored, we got out of jail there. And we yeah. did. Yeah. But that happens. That happens, right? Yeah, it does, but, it's yeah. the, but it's the perseverance of the team. It's that never give up, that never die mentality now. And we've got good players in key areas. And one thing I would say for both of our goals, the quality of the delivery often makes it as well. And I think they were both mm. two delightful deliveries into the box. Um, and Cooper's one was actually, you know, it was, a, it was an excellent goal as well because he snuck in at the back and sometimes they don't go the way. Uh, Jeffers, Jeffers will get all of the highlights and the plaudits, of course, because it's a fantastic goal, a great leap. And as you say, Taz, he's a predator. Um, that hopefully now, I would like to think that sort of kicks him on, if I'm honest. And it would be really hard now for Noble, for Noble, for Noble um, to, to to drop in because we've got we've got some good games coming up and we've got some key key fixtures. And you know we can't be dropping any more points going into the big games. It's unthinkable would Noble would drop him again. I think we can put that to bed now. Forget that. Um, well, player here. He's, on, he's only our second one since the Second World War to score 25 league goals, two successive seasons. And so we forget that nonsense of dropping in for the final three games. It won't happen. Yeah, you, you say we've got this never say die attitude, um, Lee, but that's exactly what we had Friday. We just laid down and then we struggled like hell against a bunch of kids on Saturday. You just wonder what sort of city side is going to turn out on Saturday. Um, are they hit by nerves at the moment on the final run-in? I don't think so. I think it's their mindset of keeping possession. Um, yeah, which is fine. But do it going forward. Don't do it... Well, you know, two centre-halves must be most overworked players in the uh, National League South. They see the ball more than anybody else. Get forward more. We've got two wing-backs, whatever you want to describe them. A great at bombing on. Great at getting the ball in. Bring the best out of them. See the chances up for the likes of Shea Cooper, Mitchell Weiss when he's out there, of course, and uh, Sean Jeffers. Because you've got three people there who can get gold. Absolutely. But we were chasing the game very early doors on on, on Friday, really. Um, but And we never really looked in, in the contest at all. So the fact the matter is, I think, again, I reiterate, this is just, the, this is the business end now of the season. And despite the fact that Concord weren't in the greatest form. Um, Welling, who we've got coming up, they're not in the greatest form. It's just the results that count now because we've got to get over the line and regroup. And hopefully, if all goes well, we can attack the playoffs with a little bit of gusto. What can you see us doing on Saturday, Jake? Do you think we're going to try and grind it out again? Or we're going to take the shackles off and say, come on, we look better going forward. This is why we've got to do it. I think that's the way to do it. I think Welling are going to be difficult. Um, they got a good win at the weekend against Eastbourne. Um, it's going to be hard. I think, you know, the return of Ryan Blackman, who is missing on Monday against Concord, I think will be helped. You know, he's fresh now coming off at that game. Thanks to the terms of the agreement of his signing. I think that, you know, I think that'll probably end up working in our favour. The fact we managed to win without him, he got a Monday off. And now he can come back into the central midfield and hopefully dictate against Welling. Um, we know it's going to be difficult, but you know, Nobby also has a blueprint for how to beat Welling early in the season, you know, fairly early on in his tenure. And what came out of that day, and I think that day was almost a sort of when it clicked of maybe Nobby is the one we should keep in charge, it was how free flowing we were going forward. You know, we were open, we were, we had a couple of, you know, Welling had a couple of chances because of it. But we were constantly looking to get the ball forward and attack from the wide areas. And I think that's exactly what we need to do against Welling on a much wider pitch at Clarence Park on Saturday afternoon. I think that could be the perfect plan. And again at Welling, on that day, there wasn't a reluctance to get shots away. You remember Zane Banton scored from 30, 35 yards because the goalkeeper passed straight to him. 
you know, whatever opportunity, I think in no reluctance for shooting on on the Saturday, I think both that and the wide men getting them involved as much as possible, if Sean Jeffers is starting as well, I think you've just got to go for it at this point in terms of you've got the players to break down a team like Welling. Well, if you're going to go for it with players who can break opposition down, uh, bearing in mind our mid centre midfield hasn't been that creative the last few games. Do you bring in Glenn McConnell and try and fit in somewhere there? Because there's someone. It, it, on Friday, he came on. He tried things the other players weren't doing. He tried to inject life into it. And I just think we're missing an opportunity by not giving him a decent run. So where do you play him? Because I think, that don't forget, we were missing Blackman on Monday. Yeah. And he he is the... He's the nucleus of everything creative, you know, he's always looking forward. Oh, okay, he may always it's not the obvious ball, but some his his range of passing is absolutely exquisite. And I think if you bring McConnell in, does that not upset this this well known balance that we sell that we now sort of seem to be after? So I don't know who you bring him in for. It's well play well balanced, whatever it is, well we haven't seen for the last few games. Hmm. But again, <laughs> but something I- I agree with you. Who do you bring him in for? Um, I might have to change your formation to get him in there. But you've got somebody there who can create and who can score. Um, we keep bringing him on late in the game when it's asking a lot for him to change things then. I don't know. Uh, that's well, one of the joys of not be being fair, manager, isn't one, it? Yeah, it is. But I think to upset the entire balance of the side in terms of the, the formation to accommodate one player... Uh, at this stage of the season, is quite experimental. You know, it is balanced in so much that you've got two energetic wing backs, you've got three set central defenders, you've got Blackman, and then you've got a another. Um, I think the imbalance is whether you play Jeffers, and then that false nine, if you like, playing off whether it be Cooper or Neil or McConnell uh, or Banton. So I think that's. That's where you change it. I think if you change the formation, I think just to you know adopt one player, that can backfire. I mean, if it works, it's great because then you've got almost sort of six full out attackers. But I can't see that happening at this stage. Well, it didn't work dropping Sean Jeffers. So sometimes you make decisions that work or don't work. Yeah, but Jeffers can play in that. What you missing the point? Jeffers can play in our in in our position in our balance. He only dropped Jeffers to accommodate. Uh, Cooper and Vice, or Cooper and Band up top, or wh- however you play it, um, you're not you, you're not creating a whole new formation just to fit in Jeffers, are you? Jeffers fits into the system, but he just wasn't paying off at the sort of time. It paid off fantastically well at the start of the season when he's banging in 15, 16, 17 goals. Mm. Um, I just think he had a bit of a. I think you actually hit it on the head. I think the fact is he needed to kick up the ass and. Um, he cut, thankfully, we've got we've got players who who respond well, and we've got players who can come in. McConnell's certainly one of those players, no doubt about it. I'm not I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't play, but I'd just love to know who you want him to play instead of. Well, you look at the side for Saturday uh, against Welling. Ben Smith will presumably make way for Ryan Blackman. Um, beyond that, will he change things? I can't see it. Um, Obviously, Detroit out for the next two games. He's suspended. Uh, I think uh, Glenn's going to be on the bench and it'll be the same bench as we've seen last Monday. Yeah, I think, I the, think only cha- the only change... The only change... Cha- sorry, Jake. The only change will be Blackman in for Smith. Yeah, I think the only possible option would be Glenn in for Zane Banton. Because uh, I think you can take Cooper out at the minute because he is scoring goals. You know, he's he's been an extraordinarily successful loan signing, Shea Cooper. Like, a- amazing. We have to give plaudits to Shea and the, you know, <laughs> the management team for bringing him in, him in. It's been superb. You know, a goal-scoring midfielder. How rare are those? Especially at St. Albans City. Um, so it's been it's been really, really good. But that's the only option for me is, is, is Glenn for Zane. But at this stage of the season, you know, Zane Banton is he's he's been Mr. Reliable, hasn't he, for so many years for us. Do you drop him and does he deserve to be dropped? I don't know. He's probably not been involved as heavily in recent weeks in terms of attacking play, but then he does pop up with goals, you know. He does he does score occasional goals. So it, it's a difficult one, but yeah, I can see the only change being really for me is Blackman coming in into midfield. Uh, otherwise, I know it wasn't a spectacular win on Monday but it was a winning team. 
and you saw again the celebrations at the end with the players, how much it meant with to them that started and well played the game. Um, and we're now, you know, I think it's easy to forget we've only got three games left. It really is now crunch period, and you need your best players out there and your most reliable players as well. Yeah, because Zane has got what nine league goals. He's his joint best return uh, with us, so I think it'd be very hard to drop him at the moment. Yeah, um, it, uh, he's probably had his best season with us, not not just for his goals, but uh, mm. his all round play. Yeah, I agree, absolutely. Right, and um, last time we played well in United, I think you mentioned Zane scored there, and uh, Sean got the other two goals. One in the ninetieth minute. He likes that ninetieth minute, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> That'll do, mate. That'll do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Welling, I think they've still got Jamie Sendrell's white, haven't they? And they were lucky back in December. They had Avon Jones on loan for a little while. Um, didn't extend it. Uh, beyond that, I think that's their St Albans connection, isn't it? Oh, dear. That's very, that seems a bit harsh, that, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, me. He um, wasn't a fan. He wasn't a fan, was he? Well, they, they've also got the almost saint as well of Sam Cox. Um, who <laughs> almost joined the Saints last season and is actually in the, the new series of the, the uh, Apple show Ted Lasso, if anyone does watch that. I'm sure no one on watching this watches that. Um, but um, we know it's going to be difficult. They haven't got much to play for. They're pretty much safe now, aren't they? You know what? They're nine points ahead of the bottom four. Easy, easy for them. But then they beat Eastbourne on Saturday with a really good victory. It's going to be difficult. And... I mentioned last week, and I think it turned out to be two games that weren't particularly pretty. And I suspect Welling will come to Crowns Park again and make it a real fight for David Noble and the boys. Because I'm sure they'd be more than delighted to spoil our afternoon and spoil our run towards getting a top seven finish. I'm sure they'd absolutely love it. Well, we're actually now in quite a strong position, aren't we? Yes, the club's behind us. We've got games in hand. Some have, some haven't. Um, but uh, we've what, got a four point cushion over eighth place Eastbourne. We are sitting pretty, it's in our hands, really. And I fancy yeah. us to do it. I fancy us to be in the playoffs. I fancy us to actually, yeah. actually win the playoffs. Well, I think that's the oh. thing, you know. As, as... <laughs> oh, hold on, um, as much as you know, after Friday, there is a lot of you know, sorrow and sort of uh oh, you know, the results have gone our way this weekend on the whole. And that's why the victory on Monday, which I celebrated in a in a gift shop in York when I saw the, the notification of the goal come in, was so important because of the results around us. And it is in our hands now. And how long, you know, have we been wanting this to be with three games left to go, we can get to the playoffs. So it's all to play for. And it is it is massive. But you'd rather be in this position than any other realm, mm. surely, apart from winning the division. <laughs> Well, you'd rather be in this position than being York, you mean? Did, did you go to that match at York, uh, either of you, when we played them in the Conference National? Nil-nil draw. They totally outplayed us, particularly in the first half. Shot after shot, and they couldn't get a goal. But uh, we got a very useful point. So you be fair, To be fair, Tabs, there were many, many teams in that division who outplayed us <laughs> that season. But... But the experience was what it was what it was all about, wasn't it? So uh, there we go. Anyway, you're going to match my optimism. Us reaching the playoffs. I don't think anyone can reach that level of optimism, Dave. If I'm honest with you, mate. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, of, of course. Um, as Jake said, three games. I think the key. I think the key game for me is Dartford. Um, but focusing on one game at a time, it'll be interesting well, to what, see. How... Why is Dartford key, then, Lee? Why is Dartford look key? Ooh. For me, I just think that it's going to be the tougher of the games. I think that uh, it's... I've always... When I put about a month ago, I was looking at the running. And, you know, you sort of, you sort of circle maybe potential three-point games, etc. And with the Dartford game being so close to the, to, to the end of the season, I just thought, we don't want to be sort of going into that needing to win at Dartford to keep our run going. That's why we need it. It was really important for the Concord result. We need to get three points here um, against Welling. It was just, just, just something I had because Dartford are a good side. I mean, they are a good side. They've still got some good players. They're not firing massively, but, you know, they, it's, it's the key game for me. Um, I would expect us to beat Welling. 
Uh, but again, it'd be really interesting to s- find out how we react if we go a goal down because uh, it didn't end up well against Braintree. Uh, and these teams that are well managed, well coached, well organised. We do struggle to break these sides down, and mm. I think this um, we need to overcome that. If that was that is going to happen again at some point. I think Dartford's probably the uh, not the key one at all. Um, I think going there. Getting a point is a bonus because of the five sides above us, three of them have done a double over us. Mm. <laughs> so, well, we could be said we're in a generous position. Um, we struggled against the top side, but if we get a point at Dartford, they might have already wrapped up runners up place. So less pressure on them. Um, and they might be happy to let us have a point. It won't be that easy. You know what I mean? I think the big games at the wedding beat that and then that really does put pressure on the other sides who need to catch us yeah. and don't get Farber they've slipped a bit of late but if they can get it yeah. back together they've got two games in hand which means a busy run in the last few weeks if they get it back together that match at Clarence Park on the final day of the season should be a cracker one would imagine unless we slip up badly in the next two games they're going to need it more than us um, but if we can get three off points off well in could be two draws or even one draw might do us, but uh, two wins would certainly do us. You'd have thought. Mm. Yeah, I think I think this Saturday is really important actually to get another mm. win. But I was going to say, you know, it's it's up. You could argue that a lot of the games that we aren't involved in in the next week and a half are just as important as the games we are. I mean, this Saturday, Worthing have got Braintree at, at, at home. That's a big game. Tuesday is Farnborough Worthing, and that could almost be some sort mm. of shootout for some position in the playoffs. And as you say, Dave, and even next, you know, Dartford, you know, 48 hours before they play us, they play Concord on Thursday night. Mm-hmm. There is a lot of football to come. You know, thankfully our fixture congestion is sort of eased now. We've only got Saturdays left. There is a lot of midweek and Saturday games left that the teams around us are all playing each other, which hopefully will work in our favour. But it could be, you know, that come the last week of the season, there could still be four or five teams fighting out for any position in the playoffs. So it's going to be really tight and we just need to focus, at least the players just need to focus on Saturday and just take it one game at a time now. I think, you know, that's all you can hope for. It's in our hands. We can do all we can. And you've got to start with victory on Saturday against Welling. And we'd love it to be a comfortable, do it whatever way. But honestly, however it comes, as long as we get three points on Saturday, I couldn't care less. Even if it's an own goal in the 90th minute, even if it's like George Sykes's bobble over the goalkeeper from 2013. We'll take it, mate. 14, we'll take it. Anything will do. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, uh, you'd just like to see us not be struck with fear, but to go out there and express ourselves, because that is our strength. No two ways about it. We've seen it this season. And we attack. That's St Albans City at their best. Now, do you think the brain tree result was was a a result of fear, Dave? Or because I don't know what I it was. Saw... It... No, I was just saying. I don't think it was fear. I think it was just the fact that they were more savvy and they were harder to break down. And I don't think we had a a plan for that. I don't think it was fear as such. Um, you know, we have been labelled in the past. Uh, of losing our bottle when it comes down to the big games going into the playoffs. But I agree with you. I think that I, I think we'll get in there. Um, I just think we need to be just mindful of the games coming up. And as Jake said, just take each game at, at a time and see where we end up. But ultimately, I don't think we fear anyone, really. I think the brain tree result was just down to the fact that they were well organised and we didn't have a plan B on the day of the game. So... I don't think we fear size, Lee, but I think we were fearful of losing possession and we went out of our way to make sure we kept it. So if we got over the halfway line, mm. we went back again. To, and it was monotonous. It was ridiculous. And we were never going to win playing that way. Um, and also, we went into the game above them. So I think part of the thinking may have been, well, it's up to them to break us down. They need to win more than us. But we made it easy for them to, to do that we didn't do it in their half. We played all our football in our half. And uh, eventually it goes wrong. It's, it's, it proved. Hmm. There we go. Anyway, Alex, what about prediction for Saturday? Um, 
it's, I think it's going to be a right KG 2 1 Saints, to be fair. I think it's going to be quite tight. Um, I, hope, I don't know what it is, but I don't know whether it, it was the fact we had 2,000 there or again we were at home. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to think that monkey is well off of our back now, but I, I can't see. I don't think it's going to be a blowout. I think it's going to be quite cagey and quite close. But I still think we've got enough in, in, in the bank to get us the win. It's interesting what you say about home, Lee, really, because our away record, of course, only Ebsley have got a better record than us in the division. Hmm? Yeah. So it would have been nice if it was the other way round and uh, those 2,000 crowds, they, they would have enjoyed themselves a bit more, maybe. Anyway, Jake, uh, your turn for Saturday. He's, he's pinched your 2-1 result. I was going to say, so I'm going to have to go 3-1, sadly, because uh, I don't have much choice otherwise. Um, I'd say it was just, I know, you, Lee, you sort of hinted earlier, that, that fear, etc. I think it, that's why I think Monday was so important. You know, so many times over the years, we've lost at home or got a result at home and then absolutely failed away somewhere like Concord on a bank holiday Monday, thinking of a few seasons ago. So it made a real difference for that not to happen this year. And I, as you say, I think that we have gotten monkeys off our backs this season. We are almost there, you know, and I think the players, they don't have anything to fear. Just go for it, you know. They, you know, the, the supporters are behind you. It doesn't really matter, does it? Just go for it, lads. Just enjoy it. Unless I'm mistaken, isn't it voting for the Player of the Year award on Saturday? Yes, I think it is for the annual end of season awards. I think it's also City Youth Day uh, in mind with uh, Youth Talk, a local charity. So, could be quite a, a reasonable crowd there on Saturday. So um, it should be a good day. But yeah, if you do go down and you've never done the end of season voting awards, uh, take part. Um, it should be, always be good fun. Come on in, Jake. Who's your, where's your vote going? Oh. End of season. Best player. Oh, this is very difficult. Mm, I mean, on the... On the, on the face, it, you'd, you'd say Sean Jeffers, wouldn't you? But I think there's been so many players this season that have performed absolutely brilliantly. And I think, you know, someone like Zane Banton could be could be a real shout. You know, he has been consistent throughout the season. I think of even to the start of the season under Ian Anderson, where all the players around Zane were shouting at him for getting in the way, you know, not being in the right position. When in reality, Zane was the only one trying to lead the attack and get us into the box. So I think probably for me, I'd put Zane Banton if I wasn't going to go for someone like Sean Jeffers. You, for me, you can't look anything past Devante, if I'm honest. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the fact of everything he's been through and to come back better, stronger, faster than he was anyway, he has been a revelation on that right wing. You know, he's basically a winger. Um, he's consistent. And he's got energy to absolute burn. I think he beats a man with ease. He is an intelligent footballer, which is very unappreciated at times. And, you know, he does a damn good shift. And he's always a good outlet for us going forward. And that's that's been key. And, and I think, yes, Jeffers gets the goals. I think both wing-backs, Tafari Moore mm. as well, is, is an honourable nod. I think he's been absolutely outstanding in his own right. Um, but for me, Devonte absolutely is, I think he's just the epitome of everything that we want to see from a City player. Brave, strong, quick, intelligent. Um, he gets my nod. I think you two have picked the four players who are going to be the <coughs> leading contenders. Um, the two goalkeepers, <laughs> mm. both of them had their dis the season's disrupted by injury, of course, and uh, Dylan Berry coming into the picture late in the day, in a way. Uh, both of them could be in a shout as well. Uh, maybe not enough appearances for each of them, but um, I don't think you're looking far out of that little group for the winner. No, but I think it's in the past when you've only really had one candidate, possibly two, a, a, a push to choose from. This is, I think, is testament and is a fair reflection of where we are now as a team and what we've created. We've created a whole team uh, of fantastic players. We we are no longer the Northern City of old where we're faltering just before the playoffs and we've got one or two people that have been, you know, the key icons for us, if you like. We've now got, as you say, Dave, four, five, possibly even six players who we can choose from and no one would really disagree with any of them. So I think that's uh, that will set us in really good stead, mate, going forward. Good. All right. Anything else? Oh. One thing I would like to say, um, on the back of last week's pod, uh, we've had some very favourable uh, 
messages and comments. Jake, we got accosted, didn't we, in the in the beer queue uh, on Good Friday, saying how much they enjoyed it and uh, how it's nice to see that we get a balanced opinion of things and that we speak with such passion about the club as well. So thank you very much for those people. Uh, it is appreciated. Um, uh, apart from that, but we do want to get in touch. Don't just you know let us waffle on for 45 minutes get in touch have your say uh young young jacob um is going to give us uh all the information we need about how to get in touch yeah at a pod full of saints on twitter and the email address to be listed below um and yeah as lee says thank you as always for watching and enjoying this uh i wouldn't say entertaining but whatever it is <laughs> someone enjoys it out there uh so that's really greatly appreciated um, so yeah, and we'll just say thank you very much, and we look forward to speaking to you again, hopefully after another mm. three points. And David Tavener has one more point to raise. Oh, here we go. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good one. No, it's, it's something we touched on last week actually. Um, very significant date uh, tomorrow, Thursday, thirteenth of April, because it was on the thirteenth of April, nineteen oh eight. My grandmother was born. Um, but St Albans City Football Club was also born. They're both in a similar state now. Um, so, happy birthday to the club, 115 years old. Who'd have thought it? <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice to celebrate it with uh, cementing our playoff? Well, not cementing it Saturday, but uh, mm. it, uh, giving that as a late birthday present. Anyway, there you go, 115 years old on Thursday. Happy birthday, right. everyone. <laughs> on that note. On that note. See you later, everyone. Bye-bye. Cheerio.